what I'll do. Okay. So, that last video did really well. And we got some good comments in the back in, down there and I want to I want to go over some of them. Some of them are good questions. So we're going to we're going to talk about those uh those, those ones that were good. Let's pull these up. We rock out to some badass fucking God, that sounds good. Doesn't that sound good? Doesn't that sound good? I think it sounds amazing. Now, I would put the comments on the screen, but I don't want my screen, my stream to blow up because it keeps doing it every time I try to, like, do something. So we're not going to do that. And I'm just going to read out. The music might be a little too loud. I'll turn you down a little bit. There you go. Like right there. Okay, so the first comment here. There are three comments that I pulled out. That I think are really good and worth talking about. Uh, so first one, you know, someone liked the video. And they asked about the topic of delayed gratification. Thank you. This is my grandmother's jacket. Asked, and... Specifically, switching from Street Fighter to Tekken. It's been really challenging for this person. And they've been spending way more time in the lab and doing replay analysis than they're used to. And, uh, and they're, but like they're saying that I'm used to, but it's a case of what is my end goal? I could probably rank up quickly by doing a lot of gimmicks, and these certainly have their place. But the question I ask myself is do I want to be good rank player? or a good player in general. I don't think these two are mutually exclusive, they're not. Uh, being a good player in general will lead to being a good in ranked, but the opposite isn't always true. So sometimes it's worth thinking, where do I want to be in years rather than in weeks time? Thank you, Marquis. Yeah, I'm answering questions that came out or responding to some comments that came out from that particular video because people seem to really like that. So let's give you all some more of that. I have a bunch of shit like that in my back pocket, baby. That's just, just right there. I just threw that shit together just at the end of the stream, like I am right now, and I'm half delirious <laughs> after playing a long set. Um, today, he loved the video, recommended it to your friends. I'm so happy to hear that. That must be how it's getting spread around so much. And I see so many of you are here from that video. So that's great. I am excited about that. And so delayed, delayed gratification, uh, it makes sense. It's a good, it's a good, it's relevant, it's relevant to this. So when you take the approach that I'm taking to getting better at this game, as you see, I get very frustrated. I get very angry sometimes too. And I sometimes start throwing snake edges out when I shouldn't be. Okay. Uh, because sometimes I just want to get a win. Sometimes I just want to get that dub. I'm like, fuck this. Give me the dub. I don't want to lose right now. <laughs> but for the most part, I try really hard. Uh, not yet. We're ending with some discussion. But there'll be a VOD. You can catch it later. Uh, but when I'm focused on like the goal. And the goal is to get better at this game. To be more efficient at doing damage, not taking damage making my opponent feel the risk of their decisions. That's the biggest thing I'm not doing right now. I'm not making people feel the risk. So they're not afraid. They just press shit. And the ones who just feel like pressing shit are the ones who are most vulnerable to being blown the fuck up. So you really gotta utilize those advantages you have. But it's hard to do it perfectly because if you mess up, you get launched and you get smacked in the face. Uh, so it's really hard when you do that. Yeah, the goal, this idea of setting realistic, you know, smart, smart goals, basically, you know? You want to set smart goals. That's that's what most people will tell you. And th that's kind of what this is. But what makes smart goals hard is that if your goal is not short term, because because time limited, right? Like part of smart goal is the T, the time. So you have to... I think what makes it also hard is that you have to know the thing you're doing, the strategy you're using is going to work. Like, for instance, I'm stepping attacks. I know stepping works. I know stepping at this time works against these moves. 
because I practiced it and I did it in training mode and I know it works, but when I try it in the match, it, I fuck it up and I get tagged and I get hit and I might think to myself, does this really work? Is this really a viable tactic if I can't execute it well enough? So you have to, you have to know whether the tactic you're utilizing is, is solid. It's, it's foundational. That's why foundations and basics are so important in fighting games. Why people harp on them so much. But few people really know what fundamentals really are. Part of playing the frames. Very few people play the frames. Okay. Uh, other parts, knowing your options. Knowing how to mix your options well. How to defend against different options. And, and doing all that fluidly. For most skill tiers, before you get like to the very upper echelon, all you have to do is play your frames and you'll win. That's all you have to do. But that's really hard. And it's really tempting to just throw out that big move that isn't in the frames because you just want to get that hit and you're not confident that you're going to be able to consistently execute those frame tight options. Because if you're laid by a frame, you get popped. And now you're getting launched and now you've lost like 80 points of damage because you did something stupid that was right, but you didn't execute properly. And now you're losing to someone who you could have beaten if you hadn't messed that up. But, you know, you gotta give it time. And breaks are important. Breaks are good. Uh, you gotta know your frustration level and, like, don't get it, don't let it get too high. Because that's not good either. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it's not really just about... It's not, it's not about delayed gratification so much as it's about... I mean, it's part of it. But it's more about, like, frustration tolerance. And being comfortable, being uncomfortable. It sounds really cliche, everyone says this, but it's really important in fighting games or in skill development. Like you have to be okay with like not being okay. Like I'm okay being angry or being frustrated. I don't want to be there for too long, but like I'll get frustrated. You see me get frustrated as I'm using this tactic. Um, now, what helps me is that I know this works. Like for me, I know this works for me because I've done it already. That's why I got that. That's why I got two of those. Okay? There are two of them. Back to the second one right here. There it is. There, there are two medals up there. One from one year, one from the other. Okay? That's how I got them. So I know this works for me. Uh, I know the approach works for me. But it took me a long fucking time the first time. Because I think I just didn't know what I was doing. And I was floundering for a long time. Part of why I make these videos, and why I'm talking to you all, is because I... You don't have to flounder like I did, because no one told me this shit. People would just, like, marathon sessions and play kind of endlessly and hope that you'd get better that way. And some people did, and some people do, but everyone doesn't. It's, it's not a consistent way to get better uh, it, for everyone. But analyzing your matches, looking back at your options, what my, what's my goal for Tekken 8? My goal for Tekken 8 is to get better at Virtual Fighter as a result. That's the goal, really. Um... That's the real goal. That's the real end goal. I want to get as good at this game as I can, so long as I find the process enjoyable. If that changes, then I will reevaluate. So I often have decisions and goals that are malleable, that, that can change based on how I'm feeling about my moving toward the goal that I have. But the potential goal is Virtual Fighter. That's the game I want to get better at. And Tekken's a vehicle for me to do that. Wow, wait. That song isn't working for me. Most people starting out in fighting games just want to do a cool yes. comp. And that's a perfectly fine goal. Uh, this topic is not for that player. That is not who I'm talking to. That's not who's finding my video in the algorithm. I'm talking to the player who wants to get better. Who desperately wants to beat that ass, wants to go in tournaments. Like, I would love to be able to go to tournaments in, in Tekken 8 and I compete like I do in Virtual Fighter. I would love to be just like a threat to motherfuckers. And like, that'd be fun. I, I love it. I love competing. It's so much fun. Um, but you have to do a lot of work to get there. And the reason why there aren't that many high-level players across all games, because the top is like not many of them, only a couple, a handful, most of the time, because it's really fucking hard. <laughs> you have to study a lot, you have to know a lot, and you have to also be able to do the things you know. Uh, that's a lot to ask of someone to, to, to do. It's not easy. And 
it's not fun for everyone. You have to find, I think, really the process fun and enjoyable. I generally do, so I, that's why I do it. I, I like the challenge. It just feels good. So back to this discussion of delay gratification, for me, I'm not really getting delayed gratification. I'm getting gratification along the way. So I think a reframing of how we think about skill development in, in, in fighting games is more important. And, and also like, so what? You get good and then what? What? What's going to happen? You're going to not be the best of the best and you're going to be bodying everyone around you? Is that going to feel good? It might for a while, but you might like get bored of that. Like you might want to have challenges again. So likely you're not going to have yourself getting bored because there's always going to be someone who's going to try and, you know, come back and, and, and mess you up because they're going to see you're at the top. But it's hard to stay at the top because it's hard to stay thirsty once you're there. Um, yeah, that, that fire has to be alive in you and it, 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 it's not as bright once you've gotten what you want. Um, which is why I encourage folks to not have the goal, just be, I want to be good at this game. I mean, that will be a natural byproduct of you finding things about the process, the journey of getting good. That is what you probably want to enjoy. If your goal, again, talking to intermediate players who want to get good, if your goal is to get really good, you need to enjoy that process. If you don't enjoy the process, if it's required to get good, then maybe, you know, maybe don't really want to get good. Basically. So taking notes, it's good gratification. Even if you don't feel your skills improving, your knowledge is, you have physical proof of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's also nice too. I like notes because it helps remind me of things I forget because I forget stuff. That's, part, that's kind of part of why I initially started making videos was to look back at my own sets and see what the fuck I was doing and reviewing them and, and, and then analyzing my own sets. I used to do our long streams of me breaking down every single interaction, every movement between me and my opponent. I would explain what happened. I would explain why I did what I did, why my, I think my opponent did what they did, and what I could have done to be even more optimal, knowing what I know now, and then looking back at what's happened in earlier parts of the set, how might I have arrived at this decision point then? What, what, what could have, what were the clues? That is, um, what I used to do. I don't have to do it anymore. But I've been kind of doing that with Tekken. Uh, in a more efficient way, I think. Because the replays feature is really fucking good. Um, okay, so that, that was the first one. I want to, there are three. Uh, the second one is from, that first one was from Fairfax FGC. Thank you for your comment. Very thoughtful. Uh, second one was from Findlay Anime. It's three points. So you have actually... It's, it's more of a... You're adding to the discussion. Saying you have to actually examine all parts of your game that you can figure what solution is to something constantly beating you. System mechanics, normal, special, movement, hitboxes, fuzzy timing, all kinds of stuff. So you got to play to learn, not to win, which is what we're just talking about. Obviously you want to win, but there's often so many simple solutions not thought of and when you look back at moves you've disregarded, that's so important. Um, especially in like Virtual Fighter, there's so many moves that are all useful uh, and you need to find their use for them because they're there for a reason. In Tekken, there are some moves that you just shouldn't be using, like Snake Edges, unless you really have a big read, but really you could probably pull that off with less risk and more reward without it. Um, so so you, in Tekken, you also have to sift through moves that you really shouldn't be using anymore, which are just for the noobs, really, like the noob moves. Uh, a noob killer moves, another one. Third point was you're getting, you know you're getting better when you recognize someone clearly better in terms of either execution or knowledge, but are able to gain an edge on them uh, out if not adapt. Basically, he's talking, they're talking about, you, you know you're getting better when you can like adapt to someone who is objectively better at you in other areas, but you still beat them because you have better reads. Um, I would not fully agree with that in the sense that uh, reads, execution, 
combos, all of that's important. Uh, you can achieve pretty high levels with one of those three being really out of whack and the other two being lower, but there will come a point where, again, you're trying to keep growing, growing and growing, where you're going to have to address your weakest area and you're going to have to raise that. You may not like it. Like for me in VF, it was for, it was defense. Uh, I don't like blocking. Famously don't like blocking. I like to press buttons. If I have nothing but buttons on my joystick, just, 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 just buttons, more buttons. Okay. Uh, I like crushing people. I like using evasiveness and evading people, but I don't really like blocking all that much. And I like to find solutions that don't involve blocking. That was a problem. So I had to eventually work on that. And what I ended up doing is instead of thinking of blocking as like, I'm just sitting here passively defending myself, I switched it up to, oh, I'm not actually just defending. I'm regaining the advantage because once I block your move, now it's my turn again. And I, I, and now I get to steal the frames you just given me because I blocked your shit or even better. I evade your bullshit fucking attack and now I get to punish you because I knew how to defend against that. So defense became really a part of my offense and i be had a more have a more integrated view so now my defense is much better i have a really good defense now because i've been able to think of it through the framework of offense which is how i like to think of mix-ups uh it's not the question here i see in the chat the moment i think someone's better than you you've lost the mental game so i've always hyped myself up to reassure yourself that i'm capable of winning yeah that's super important you don't want to that's a whole other thing Actually, in tournaments, it's really big. It's a big thing in tournaments. Uh, to <laughs> strong players have an aura around them, like a DBZ aura that we can tell when our opponent's afraid of us. And like, you can kind of lean on that in a tournament where you just end up doing, you just destroy them. You just you can feel when someone's soul and spirit is being crushed because they expect to lose already. Yeah, you can smell the fear. You can really can. Don't do that. Don't be fearful. Uh, now, be realistic. Yes, this person's achieved a lot in their, you know, time. You have good reason to think they're probably going to win, but that doesn't mean you, you can't take a game off of that person, ever. Every match you have to go into saying to yourself, I can, I can, especially in a tournament, I can beat this person. If I just do this, 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 and this, and this, and you might be having a very tall order in front of you, but have a plan of what you might be able to do. And eventually you're going to have the ability to, to come up with a plan that will work uh, as you do that more and more often. <laughs> but yeah, don't beat yourself up before your opponent beats you. Last comment is from Necromancer Eat My Pantser. Fancy name. I like it. Uh, Fantastic advice. I just want to, just what I need to hear as well. I'll add a touch of buffer as someone who's brand new to fighting games. I haven't played in 20 plus years. This is probably more geared to brand new players who are uh, still panicking and mashing wildly. Learn to observe. If you find it difficult at the moment, when the match starts, back away and see what other people do. Don't rush in. Don't get a... Uh, uh, just get a feel for the arena and the person in front of you. Uh, watch opponents and try to pick out their fast, medium, slow attacks. Oh, that must be a jab. That must be a heavy tripping move. That's them throwing me. React to how you will, but just focus on them for a while. Conceptualize in conceptualize it over time to understand the scary frame data subject later you can pair it up oh okay these are fast moves our 10 frames it's clicking very good comment ah it's more it's not over yet and like you said try to identify at least one thing that you could have done better in each fight open up the replay and experiment with that situation that you couldn't handle doing stuff like this as a total beginner was very bite-sized. Even a person who doesn't want a spreadsheet like I do, I added that, uh, can do it. I've imposed, improved my gameplay quite a bit in the early stages by just doing this. 
and I've only played about 20 minutes a day. That, I'm going to stop here. That 20 minutes a day thing is super key. When I first started, like, really trying to get better initially, and I didn't have a lot of time because I was a fucking doctoral student. Like, I had a lot of work. So, uh, I would just play for about 20 minutes a day or 10 minutes a day sometimes. But I always made sure I played at least 20 minutes a day. Whether it was just, you know, dashing around, playing an opponent, but just, just, just anything. And it, you'll get better. You'll get better doing that. Playing on a stage is like fighting you versus your opponent versus your nerves. Yeah. Yeah, I'm new and mash way too much. Yeah, it's okay. You'll get it. Okay, back to the comment. Uh, open practice. Da, da, da. Evaluate afterwards. So open, open the practice arena. Focus on something you sucked at today. Go into quick match or ranked. Try to do that one thing at least once per round or something. Evaluate afterwards. Open the replay and turn on the input display to see what you were pressing. This might not be enough to improve when you are intermediate. He's wrong. The commentator is wrong. It is enough. I don't know. Granted, they weren't sure. It is. But as a beginner, I found that routine pretty effective. And overall, it gets you used to thinking more technically and being aware of what your hands are really doing. Baby steps. And as you get into the rhythm, you can start up actual notes in the spreadsheet. Now that you have some accumulation behind you. I still have a long way to go. I'm still a beginner, but many of my counterproductive habits are gone, and the path toward pe feels much cleaner. Exactly. All right, that that's that's the third comment that I want that like I picked out because I thought it was really really good. And I wanted y'all to I want to read it out loud. It's what you do. It's what you do, right? <laughs> it's what people do. You read out good comments. I was gonna put it on the screen, but my computer would probably die. So you have to come to the chat. You have to come to my live stream and hang out till the end, I guess. To to be here for these commentary discussions and be on the screen. But uh, yeah, that's really it. Uh, I think we've we've hit everything. This is awesome. Again, thank you. All of y'all who are just really sharing the content, really resonating with it. And like, God, she's such a good set. This is a, just badass chick playing the saxophone right now she's so good i play saxophone i love saxophone she's just hot too so it's like oh my god okay so focus 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 it okay so <laughs> it's good to play defensive to learn fundamentals rather than just mash offense ah uh, it depends i learn by mashing because i like to mash but if you like to defend then do that if you are trying to learn the game it's fine to mash oftentimes what i'll do when i'm trying to learn a new tactic i'll overuse it i'll use it everywhere possible i use it in the bad spots the good spots whatever man i'm just doing this new shiny thing as much as i possibly can not just because i want to practice it but because i want to see where doesn't it go and sometimes you'll find that a thing goes in a spot where you wouldn't expect. Are you aiming for Tanker Emperor with um, Ling? I mean, if I get there, I get there. If I don't, I don't. Um, I'm pretty sure I can get the Fujin with practice and diligent practice. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to be as good in Tekken as I am in Virtual Fighter. Right, it's like limit test. Right, exactly. It's like limit testing your moves. So whenever I learn a new thing, I try to just overuse it, overuse it, overuse it, and, and then bring it back, pare it back down. Um, because sometimes people don't use things enough, and, and when you learn a new thing, the best way to really ingrain it in your mind is just do it a fuck ton, do it a ton, do it more than you need to, and like again, you know, you're gonna lose. It's fine. Like it's cool. Uh, as you overuse it. You'll start to see, oh, okay, it doesn't go here. Let me stop doing it there. And you'll say, oh, it doesn't go there. Let me stop doing it there too. Oh, it sometimes goes here. I wouldn't expect that. Well, I guess I'll like have to make a read. And then you think about, well, okay, well, why is it working here sometimes? What are the characteristics? What's the situation that makes this work? And then you'll say, all right, I have to pay attention to that. So I may not use it in that situation unless I really know that's going to work. Uh, or have a reason to think that based on what I've seen earlier in the match. 
Um, you feel like moveless memorization should be one of the first steps to talking about testing moves? Uh, you do have to memorize the move list to a degree, but... Well, oh, sorry, I'm tired. Um, my approach was really to learn combos first, because you'll learn the move list through the combos. It'll also point you the right direction toward what moves are like your combo starters. What moves are you working toward? What moves do you need to set up so that you can land those those combo starters? Really, uh, now I'm more focused on the more granularity of this, uh, more of the how do I use the same moves to target different situations. So, like now, I'm thinking about I can frame trap mid attacks that are going to be 14 frames most likely, uh, or, or slower, which can strangle your opponent. It can make them have to play tighter. Now, what I've learned in Tekken is that there are not many situations where you're going to be plus nine and uh, uh, hitting your opponent, at least for Ling, and be front facing, which is kind of annoying. So you have to block a move or make a move with, then you can enforce something. Uh, I always miss your stream because of work, but I've been watching your YouTube. I'm thankful you are watching my YouTube. I'm thankful you're here right now. I don't know you stream this late. Uh, and Tekken's also kind of changed my streaming schedule. I typically also don't stream nearly as much as I am right now, but I really like this game. And the last time I streamed this much was when I was getting better at Tekken. I mean, Virtual Fighter. Okay, so with that, we are going to end this stream for real. And thank you again for coming by here and chatting. Uh, if you have any more questions or thoughts or comments, please just toss them in right here or in the YouTube comment section afterwards. It also works. And let's see, who are we going to raid? I got to figure that out. I'm going to have some ramen for dinner. Or I might have a hamburger. Or I might have a chopped cheese. Or turkey sub. I don't even know. What do you think? What should I have for dinner? Oh! Akai's playing Virtual Fighter. I'm going to send you to him. I'm going to send you to him. So he's doing a Friday session league right now. Virtual Fighter League. Happens every day. Every night. He runs these. There are great places to play in the train. And if you're like, I wish I could play Virtual Fighter. I wish I could do this. Go to his streams and join and join in. They are every, almost every day. In NA, in Europe. And in Europe. Those are the two places, really. Akai underscore VF. This song is so good. Give him a follow. Support the V. 